Hello, friends, and welcome back to r slash pro revenge. Let's start with a story about the bank that refused to close our OP's account and let him out of the country. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. All you need is $5. I was stationed in Germany in the 80s, and when it came time for me to PCS, go to my next duty assignment, nobody realized they hadn't got me my orders. Typically, you'd receive your orders for your next assignment about 45 days in advance so you could get everything in order, turn in all of your gear, and clear the post. There are dozens of things you have to do, and it takes some time. Unfortunately, nobody realized that I hadn't gotten my orders until about two weeks before I was due to leave and I didn't know any better because it was my first duty station. After receiving my orders, I had to clear everything in about two days, which required my traveling to an entirely different city since our company headquarters was located about two hours from where my platoon was stationed. To say it was grueling is pretty much an understatement, but I somehow managed it. One of the last things I needed to do was close out my bank account, so off to the bank I went, orders in hand. When I inquired about how to close out my account, I was told I needed to leave them three copies of my orders and they would freeze my account for 30 days and then I could have my money. The trouble with that was I was going on leave in about 10 days at that point and that was all the money I had, other than a few marks in my pocket. I understood why they did it, but it didn't help me at that point. Since it was a checking account, they wanted to make sure I didn't run amok with a checkbook and leave a bunch of merchants with bounced checks. So after a moment of thought, I thanked them and told them I'd have to think about it and then got in line for the teller. When I got up to her, I inquired as to how much I had to leave in my account to keep it open and she replied, $5. I told her, give me everything except the $5 and I left. I figured five bucks was a small price to pay for 30 days. I did leave a forwarding address, so for about three years, I got my statement with the balance increasing by a couple of cents and eventually they closed my account for lack of activity, I guess. That wouldn't fly with modern American banks. After three to six months, they start charging inactivity fees every day until your account goes negative, then report you to the credit agencies. And our second story. Don't mess with the valets. For some backstory, I work as a valet in a small coastal city, and the restaurants I work for are very popular for both locals and tourists. We're generally busy year-round, but as the restaurants are both waterfront, spring, summer, early fall are our peak seasons per se, the downside to these restaurants is that parking can be a huge pain in the butt. Combined, the restaurants can seat around 400 people at any given time and can usually turn over about 2,500 seats on a busy weekend. But the parking lot can only hold about 60 to 70 cars at a time, which isn't much at all. That's why I, the valet, am there. We have about 25 to 30 designated valet spots. Used to have double that amount, but I digress. They're really good about utilizing all of them efficiently, so we can park as many cars as possible, thus getting as many tips as possible. Being that the valet spots are kind of in a weird spot, but really close to the restaurants and our stand, there aren't any signs that say valet only. We usually show up a bit early and cone the spots off so people know they aren't for self-parking. Now, most people see the cones and recognize those spots are pretty clearly not available, but some people are so dumb, such a-holes, that they will move the cones and park in our spots anyways. Disclaimer, there is a parking garage for overflow traffic, but people don't particularly like using it. People do this pretty regularly, and we're usually pretty cool about it. One of the valets will normally just walk up to them as they're parking and tell them that the spot is reserved for valet, and they'll usually comply. Obviously, this was not the case yesterday, or I wouldn't be writing this right now. While we were in full swing last night, some D-bag is not 100 feet from me moving a cone so we can try to sneakily take one of our spots. I was talking to a customer, so I wasn't able to immediately go tell him not to park there. After finishing up talking, I walked over to DB as he was getting out of his car and immediately knew I had encountered this exact guy trying to do this crap before. After this encounter, I knew revenge was going to be necessary. Our conversation went as follows. Me, hey man, sorry, but these spots are for valet only. That's why we have the cone set up. 
If you'd like to self-park, you can park in the main lot, I pointed to a full lot, or in the parking garage, DB. But there's no way to effing park in that lot, and I don't want to park in the parking garage. You guys always do this crap to me. So if I valet, I could just park here? That's bullcrap, bro. I'm parking here whether you like it or not. I was pretty taken aback and basically just walked away, not wanting to get into a fight over a parking spot. I knew it was time this guy learned his lesson. Now I don't have the authority to tow his car or give him a boot, and I wouldn't anyways because I'm not an a-hole, but my power is in pure number of cars I have access to. Luckily, he did this at about 8 p.m. I contractually only have to be there until 10 p.m., at which time I can park the remaining cars in certain places, then leave the keys with the bartenders inside. Most nights I would stay to get the tips, but tonight I was dropping keys. Conveniently, DB had parked in the area where we move cars to before we drop the keys. My plan, use the valeted cars to block DB in and then leave with him having no way of leaving until the cars around him left. There was one car that would be particularly important, the one directly in front of him. I had a special car for that spot. It was owned by a restaurant employee that I knew wouldn't be off until 2 a.m. Perfect. I maneuvered all the cars around him in a way that didn't make me look like I was intentionally blocking him, but in a way that made it look like I had no other choice. Everything fell into place perfectly, and I could already feel a justice chub starting to form. I went inside to drop the keys and explain to the restaurant manager what happened and my revenge. She loves us and said she'd 100% have our backs, which I figured she would. I told her to text me and tell me how everything played out. This is the text I received last night at around 11 p.m. The guy just came up to me PO'd. He said there was a car blocking him from leaving and that it needed to be moved immediately so he could leave. I tried to explain that you guys have to put cars there before you leave and that you even told him not to park there. I guess that made him mad, so he started raising his voice at me. Bar manager saw and told me that he'd been drinking for a while, which I assumed from the beginning. I told him that I couldn't, for liability reasons, allow him to drive home since he'd been drinking. He got really PO'd because he lives 40 minutes away, but ended up taking an expensive Uber home. She told me she slipped in the argument that he was going to get another ride whether he liked it or not. Revenge aside, I'm glad the manager didn't let him make that 40-minute drive drunk. I hope they continue not letting him do it, regardless of where he parks. And our last story. Great aunt gets an itch she can't quite scratch. So this happened about seven to eight years ago. My grandfather ran this electrical supply store that his father started and his still-living mother owned. My great-grandmother also owned quite a bit of real estate and land around the town, she was a slumlord landlord. She was the epitome of evil to quite a lot of people, and everyone hated her, including most of my family. To give you some traits of this woman, she threw a scalding hot pot of coffee on my uncle, snuck into my grandparents' house one night, and beat my grandmother with a baseball bat, etc. Just an all-around spiteful human being. But, you know, family. She was in her 90s and still had plenty of life in her. She took absolutely no meds, not even aspirin. While well, my grandfather managed the store, my uncle bid their supply jobs, and my mother handled all the rentals. I helped around pretty much everywhere and grew up in that business. Well, one day out of the blue, my estranged great-aunt, grandfather's sister, shows up to visit my great-grandmother. No big deal. She's been known to do this about every four to five years. Well, over the course of the following months, we'd noticed a change in demeanor towards us. She started spending all her time with her daughter, who we'll call Gail, we didn't know it at the time, but Gail was having to rewrite her entire will. Over the following months, Gail had enlisted the help of some of our local PD using mom's checkbook. Taps were placed on all our phones. My grandfather and uncles were both arrested under mysterious circumstances. My grandmother's mentally disabled brother died under mysterious circumstances in their home, had power of attorney my mom held revoked and put in her name, and then had my great-grandmother declared incompetent. It was a complete crap storm that hit us all in a row. Then she up and fires everyone in the family because it's now all hers. Luckily, at this time, we were able to destroy almost every physical copy of data we had, but not the computers. She changed all the locks and even had her corrupt cop buddies help play guard dog for her. To say we were furious would be an understatement. 
My family had poured their heart and souls into that business for decades, and it was all ripped out from under us in an instant. My family likes to take the high road, but me, not always. I pondered and waited for the right moment. It was about two months later when a very rough storm was rolling through one summer night. I grabbed my bag of supplies and hopped into my truck. It was about 1 a.m. and the town was dead. No one wanted to get out in that torrential downpour. I pulled up beside the building and killed the vehicle. Now I was pretty much raised in this building and I knew it inside and out. I also had helped install the security cameras, so I had that knowledge as well. I picked the machine shop door and snuck in. From this point on, I began to lace every possible surface with poison ivy. Keyboards, mice, phones, counters, doorknobs, toilet seat, toilet paper, just anything I knew she would touch. Interesting little fact about my family, almost everyone in my family is highly allergic to the crap, so much so that they have to go to the hospital for just getting near it. I lucked out in the genetic lottery and it doesn't affect me at all. After every surface had a nice oily film to it, I proceeded to open up the business computers and wipe every financial record and every backup. I also decided to sabotage the computer's electrical supply so it looked like a power surge blew it. To my glee, I heard the next day that she was in the hospital and a lightning strike had fried their computers. She spent that entire week in the hospital and had to keep going back for months because they just couldn't get rid of the poison ivy. All invoices and accounts, both for the electrical supply business and the hundreds of rentals were all lost. Literally, all of the information had just disappeared. She was never able to truly salvage either business. She was a raging sociopath and definitely not cut out for business. I've heard over the years that she was able to salvage the rentals somewhat with a few hiccups. One tenant threw a brick at her car for threatening her. Several people have shot up the business bricks being thrown through her windows, etc. I'm sure there's way more, but I don't keep up. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.